Welcome from St Mary's Church, Gainford, to everyone online, in our parishes and beyond. We are midway through the second lockdown and pleased that we are permitted by law and by the National Church to broadcast from within our church. Our broadcasting team today comprises our church wardens and children's church leader, assisting with reading and prayers, and they are also our choral group today. Peter and James are filming, and Brian is on the organ today. We celebrate Christ the King, and so let us rejoice and begin our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds, knowing that God is with us as we worship. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to praise God together and say the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. I'll call it the prayer for Christ the King. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King, and to follow in his service, whose kingdom 
has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Amen. We're now going to listen to our first reading. Our first reading is Psalm 95, verse 1 to 7. The Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, You that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick. And you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. I was naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? 
Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel for today directs our thoughts to Christ the King who is judge of us all and a judge who acts. I have to confess this is the aspect of Jesus, King and Lord, that I am not really inclined to focus on. Because there is, on the one hand, something so counterintuitive about the way Christ is judged. Full of mercy, grace and compassion, who descended into hell to deliver the lost. And on the other, to make clear that our choices could send us into eternal oblivion. Now this Sunday is often referred to as Stir Up Sunday. I'm told that this is the weekend that all good cooks would be giving their Christmas puddings a stir probably with a generous amount of brandy in readiness for the perfect Christmas pudding on Christmas Day. Now, some of you might have seen the Twitter from the royal family. They also said, this is Stir Up Sunday. But bringing our thoughts to our circumstances in 2020, we have all been stirred up. I joined several social media groups set up as mutual help groups since the first lockdown in March. And I am deeply moved by the practical caring among strangers who are loving one another through this difficult time. The hundreds of people in these groups have stirred one another up to share helpful information, to offer help, to pray for each other, to pray for each person crying in anxiety, and some with grief. And so in our gospel, Jesus tells us, the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Wow! This is what Jesus said. Come, you that are blessed by my Father. Throughout these months, of angst and testing, I have met, albeit digitally, and so have many others, a great many strangers who welcomed others to feed them, to care for them, to pray for them. And many have nourished one another with goodness in mind, body, and spirit. Strangers donated clothing and did whatever they could 
finding innovative ways to get help for the sick and to feed the hungry. Strangers prayed alongside prison chaplains who visit, visited those in prison. And so Jesus says, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. You know, in our Gospel reading, Jesus begins with the analogy of a shepherd separating the sheep from the goats. I do not subscribe to any serious thought that Jesus favoured sheep and had some disdain towards goats. It is simply that there is a distinction between the two types of animals and that the shepherd can distinguish between them. And so it is in human history, in life, that there is a distinction between those who turn their backs on the love that we are given and that we are called to share and those who do exercise that love. There are those who choose to go a different way, to ignore reality and the cries of the needy when the reality and the need is evident. In our present pandemic, there are those who scoff at the pleas not to kill your granny, to protect the vulnerable, and to keep everyone safe. And then there are those who are doing their very best to see everyone safely together through the pandemic. There are consequences, sad and terrible consequences, and some unfair consequences when people lose their lives due to the selfish and self-seeking ways of those who scoff. Christ the King is a just King to those who loved and cared for strangers, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. But to those who are callous, who chose to ignore the needs around them, theirs will be a grim eternal future. How fair and merciful is our Christ the King? Well, this gospel is available for all to read and to receive. And it is available for us as those who know Christ the King to live our lives as a testimony and witness to what love to stranger and love to one another is like. And so today, whether by word or deed, by the lives we lead and by good counsel in our conversation, let us encourage everyone, known or stranger, let us encourage everyone to consider the needs of the whole world, of our community, of others, and do as Jesus would have us do. Amen.
Let us now affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for one another as well as for others around the world and close by. Let us pray. A prayer for the coronavirus situation. Merciful God, we pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus in our country and in other parts of the world. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died and peace to those worried, fearful and uncertain as the virus spreads. We also pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus and those in health care who may be risking their own lives to care for their sick patients. Our prayers for today, Christ the King. We pray to the everlasting God through our Saviour Jesus who is both Christ the King and the Son of Man, and who understands our needs and the needs of the world. Holy God, may our churches be ready to serve the needs of our communities and the world. We raise before you our church here in Gainford, of which your Son is King. We ask your blessing on all who serve in the church. Let us be grateful for modern technology that enables our church to provide spiritual support to those unable to worship together at this present time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for your world of which your Son is King. We pray for peace, reconciliation, and healing in the places of war, hatred, terrorism, and the COVID pandemic. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of Christ the King, through whom and for whom all things were created. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our community here in Gainford, of which your Son is King. Help us to know the people around us to be our brothers and sisters in Christ, and to serve them as he would serve them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who suffer, among whom your Son is King. We pray that they will know the presence of your Son alongside them and the power of Christ the King within them, bringing peace and healing for them and help and encouragement for those caring for them at this time of need. And this morning, we think of Gillian having surgery tomorrow, and Jennifer recovering from her surgery, and Helen and Grant 
with chronic troubling conditions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, we raise before you all who have died and turn now with your son, the King. We pray for those who have recently died and for those whose anniversary falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we give you thanks for all that you do in our lives. As the church year comes to an end, we commend to you all those for whom we have prayed for throughout the year and ask that you use us and our prayers to make a difference in their lives. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for, for the, the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We're going to share the peace. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of God be always with you and also with you. I'm going to wish my team the peace of God. An offering is received in the knowledge that although you are not inside this church as a gathered congregation, you continue to offer money, time, and yourselves in many ways in love and service to God. And so now, our choral group is going to sing the offertory hymn. Now, some of you may have received our newsletter with the hymn printed on that. I hope that wherever you are, that you will sing with gusto. Crown him with many crowns. Let us sing.
the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. And now we give you thanks that he is the King of glory who overcomes the sting of death and opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at the right hand in glory and we believe that he will come to be our judge. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection. Send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Let us now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Our broadcast team is invited to receive communion in one form. The bread that they receive has been covered throughout this broadcast recording, and I shall administer communion masked for mutual safety.
stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously, bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you to our broadcast team. Thank you to everyone who has joined us online, whether live streamed or on YouTube afterwards. At all times, and perhaps especially as trying times such as these, our joy comes as we worship Christ together in faith and love. Next Sunday, we worship our Advent Sunday. Advent Sunday service will be broadcast live here from St. Mary's, Gainford, and again at 10.45. 12-year-old Joshua Greenwell will be our organist and be appointed assistant organist at this service. So do join us online. The wonder of Advent awaits us in both Winston and Gainford. Look out for our stars, for windows lit in Winston and bakes in Gainford. And now, the blessing. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>